So just to introduce the next pair, we have Fran Boucher from uh, National Grid, who's in charge of their commercial and industrial efficiency group, and more particularly, really in charge of their labs program across sectors here. And he'll be joined by David McNeil. And uh, I, Fran, are you going to introduce him, or do you want me yeah, to? I'll introduce him. Okay, great. You want this, or you want podium? I, I'll stand up here for now. Okay. Maybe okay. you want to. Do you want a mic up while I stand on this one? That way, save a few minutes. Hello, Fran Boucher. I'm the lab initiative manager for National Grid, la uh, electric and gas utility uh, company locally. And uh, if you want to get in touch with us to connect with us on our efficiency programs, there's some brochures up there, brochures in the back, and my email address is right in the back. So feel free to contact me. We've been running this initiative for about five years, and we've done dozens of projects in labs. And uh, we've done projects with at least three people in this room. And judging by the fact that I have neither black eyes or any bullet holes, I think I'm doing a fairly good job with these people for me to survive in the same room with them all day. Um, we uh, have uh, tens of millions of dollars available in incentive money to help you to make your labs more efficient. And we work with some uh, very, very talented uh, engineering and uh, industrial hygiene firms to assist you in identifying your opportunities. The opportunity that um, David's going to talk about today at UMass is a, it was a situation where we came in, they did not know what they needed to do, and uh, we helped them do an assessment, identify the opportunity, and then provided them, I think, some very generous funding um, for, um, for that project. Basically, uh, we pay up to 50% of the cost of the um, capital improvements that you make or the projects that you undertake to make your buildings more efficient. So if you like the things that you've seen today, I think you'll like them even better at half price. Uh, so I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, uh, but we also recognize that uh, and are discovering that um, typically when the utilities do energy efficiency work, they bring an energy engineer in, they present a project to you for you to consider and, and go ahead and proceed with. With labs, we're finding it much different. We're finding that there's a much higher need for educating the facility staff, the health and safety staff, and the uh, lab users on what's happening, how it'll affect th their aspect of the operation, and we're investing significant amounts of time uh, and uh, paying the cost for that type of education for our customers to help them to get over these, some of these hurdles that we've talked about. In the end, we find that I think, as you'll hear, people are finding it's well worth the effort, but we know that there's a, a discussion, a dialogue that needs to go on first. And so that oftentimes, rather than starting with an energy survey, we start with a dialogue. So we're happy to do that. There's no, if you're our customer, there's no charge for that. Uh, give me a call. We'll arrange something. So with all that said, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm going to introduce Dave McNeil who is the um, senior project manager for a really fantastic project, one of the first uh, projects that we started working on in this lab initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. So this is the, the Lazar Research Building on the university campus at UMass. Uh, we call it the LRB LVOP um, project. It's really just a, a ventilation project. It's a standalone research building about 350,000 square feet. And the bottom floor here is vivarium and um, dining facility. And floors two through nine are the lab floors. And they're nearly identical. And the top floor is a mechanical penthouse. And the, this is a, a very good lab building. It serves well for its intended purpose, but it's, it really is an energy hog. In fact, <clears throat> Out of all the EUI numbers I saw today, I think we beat every single one of them by, by quite a margin. <laughs> so this is a typical floor plan. The, the hatched areas are the lab floors and the alcoves. Center is some core space and some support areas. In the front building, uh, the front of the building is the, this is all office space, and that was the glass facade that you saw on the previous slide. This is the first floor. The hatched area is all animal holding rooms. The, the center is the cage wash, mechanical space, and that's the uh, design, uh, dining facility right there. Um, the project was led by National Grid, and NSTAR became involved later on in the process. And the key players here were Andelman and Lelick, Air Acuity, Exposure Control Technologies. And on the UMass side, there were several groups involved, uh, facilities maintenance, facilities engineering and construction. 
the sustainability group and environmental health and safety play, played a big role. Um, Fran first approached UMass in 2009 with this health and safety first approach. And given the, the energy use of the building, UMass was delighted and they quickly pointed to the, to the LRB right here and said, there's, your, there's a perfect candidate for this project. So in the, so in the fall of, um, or the spring of 2010, ECT came in and performed what they call a laboratory ventilation optimization project. And the focus of that process or that study was to identify energy projects that didn't affect health and safety and didn't affect the, the, um, the operation of the building, the operation of the research. So out of that study came a series of uh, energy savings measures which were evaluated by Endelman and Lelick and the minimum project requirements were defined from that point. And fast forward to 2013, the, fi the project finally started. Uh, things do move slow at UMass, but this building in the background was just coming out of the ground. It's a 500,000 square foot lab building. That was just, construction was just starting, so there wasn't, um, the LRB project kind of got put off to the back burner. But as we looked at it more closely and looked at the savings and looked at the rebates, it was just, it was really, it couldn't, we really had to do it. Uh, the project goals were to reduce air changes in the lab laboratories to 4.5 air changes per hour, eight in the animal holding rooms. And our original goal in the fume hoods was to drop the, the phase velocity to 60. This says 70 here, and I'll explain that in a second. But 60 was the, the original goal. Um, avoiding interruptions to ongoing research was really important to us. And we wanted to maintain the, the correct pressure relationships between labs and adjacent spaces. And the laboratory ventilation management plan that I have down there really, it's not really part of this project. It's, it's more of a future initiative. Um, this is a, a generic slide that really doesn't, it's, it's not the LRB, but I think it's useful to um, describe energy use intensity. On the right hand side, or the left hand side is the design phase and this bar right here is a building that meets code, nothing more, nothing less. Um, through design measures, we've reduced demand, and over here we've <clears throat> used efficiencies and maybe renewable energy components to, to really get to what I would describe as a high performance building. Unfortunately, I think the LRB is probably closer to number one than it is to number three or number four. And so moving on to occupancy, this is a concept that's been um, described all day long. And right here we have occupancy and I think number five we could call a, a post commissioning exercise. And if you went on from there and put in, to get, put in, in place a commissioning, a continuous commissioning exercise like the, the group from um, Irvine has done, your energy use trajectory takes a downward um, slope like this. If you just did the post commissioning and stopped, then it's likely, as we've seen today, that your energy use is going to continue upwards. In the LRB, I think this top line accurately describes what happened there. We moved in, occupied the building, and really nothing was done in terms of energy efficiency. So we've started way up here, and from day one back in 2001, we've slowly creeped up to this point. And the, the study uh, performed by ECT proved that to be true. In many of the, um, the lab spaces, they were under a positive pressure. In other words, we were certainly delivering excess supply, in some cases more than 12 air changes per hour. And there was a 17% discrepancy between what was physically measured at the diffusers and what was reported to the BMS. And we discovered that on the exhaust terminal boxes, the pitot tubes were covered with dust. And that was the, the major factor for that, that discrepancy. <clears throat> so out of the, the study came four ECMs. ECM1 was divided into two parts. And ECM1A <clears throat> is the cleaning of the pitot tubes and the exhaust boxes and bringing those boxes back to their design values. ECM-1B is the fume hood retrofit kit that we put in place to drop the phase velocity. 
And two and three were the demand controlled ventilation systems for the laboratory in the animal holding rooms. I just wanted to point out with this slide that there was a lot that went into this project, a lot of analysis. Uh, we really had to drill down to the zone level. This is just one floor. On the left hand side, you see the, the zones. And we looked at the, the boxes for each space and we drove down the air change rates as far as we could until we hit the lower limit of the boxes. And unfortunately, we have terminal boxes in this building. So, for example, a, a size 19 box has a turn down. We can go down as low as 845 CFM. In this zone, that came out to 5.3 air changes. So, that's as, really as low, low as we could go there. So, but overall, our air change rate is down to 4.5 from a design value of 7.3. This is a, a diagnostic and reporting tool that, that was uh, very useful for getting this project through the review process. Um, without it, the, the project probably wouldn't have gone forward the way it did. EHS was very skeptical about what we were doing, and they were very worried that we were going to create an unsafe environment in the labs. So we used um, this dashboard here to prove to them that the labs are, in fact, safe at 4.5 air changes. You can see here this particular zone is at a little bit above 4.5. And I think these uh, sensing parameters have been described earlier today, CO2, TVOCs, particulates, and so forth. Uh, lastly, the fume hood retrofit kits. On the left-hand side is a before shot of a, a fume hood in the LRB, and the um, right-hand side is a after shot. We replaced the sash handle, we replaced the airfoil sill and the baffle on the back of the hood with a vortex, vortex displacement handle, a bifurcated baffle, and an airfoil sill. And that allowed us to go down to 70 feet per minute. We could have gone down further and maintained a good containment, but like I said earlier, EHS was very skeptical about what we were doing, and they, they really didn't feel comfortable going down any further than 70. So you can see the airflow that we saved per hood. We did a total of about 129. And that's about a 30% reduction in exhaust airflow <clears throat> while improving containment. Now the project summary in the labs, we went from an actual air change rate of about 10.2 in the labs to 4.5. 7.8 was the design. And that resulted in 45,000 or 23% of our supply air, 20% exhaust. And in the vivarium, we only got down to about 10.8. Our goal was 8. Due to the configuration of the, the cage racks and the exhaust required and keeping the room positive, we, we hit a lower limit on our supply. So the savings there are a little bit more modest, 17% on the supply and 8% on the exhaust. Fume hoods were down to 70%, saving 30%, or 70 feet per minute, saving 30% on exhaust air. And the total project cost was 1.8 million. And as you can see, National Grid and NSTAR paid a uh, UMass a very very generous rebate. And the annual savings are predicted at about a half a million dollars a year. And considering the rebate, the payback for UMass is 1.4 years. So this is this really just dealt with, with ventilation. It's a, it's a discrete project that has to have an end. Um, but it's, it's really just, just the tip of the iceberg in the LRB. Like I said, it's a very energy intensive building. And, and it, it was really good to hear all the ideas here today. And, and I realize that we have a long way to go uh, with this building. That's the presentation. Thanks for listening.